Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. You have your Bibles or your device. Daniel chapter 3, 16 through 18. I will be reading from the New Living Translation of the text. Shadrach, Meshach. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. And, and, a, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, won't you want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Speak now, Lord, a word that will not only make us feel good, but a word that will make us do good. Speak now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. So good to see Dr. McPherson back up in the choir. Yeah. Yeah. I want to share for a few moments from this thought. Built to stretch. Built to stretch. Dr. King said the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Did you know that stretching is a physical exercise? I believe that the Westover football team and cheerleaders and dance team, they can tell you that. It's a physical exercise, stretching, that involves intentionally expanding and flexing a muscle or a tendon to improve flexibility and muscle tone. This can lead to increased flexibility, muscle control, and range of motion. Listen, stretching can also help lengthen and strengthen the muscles in your body. My beloved, do you know that life happens in the stretch? Man, I just blessed somebody with that. So, so, so my beloved, you have to learn how to survive the stretch. All of us have changed over the years. Look at the person next to you. Yet that which has made us unique, it still remains. We have all changed in one way or another, yet even though we have changed physically, we are still the same person on the inside. It's our spiritual lives However, that God wants to change, transform, and God wants to stretch, as the Bible says, from glory to glory. Here it is, here it is, to stretch is to expand or extend something to a greater size, to a greater level, or to a greater length. 
So when it comes to life, being stretched means that we are growing. Man, I just blessed about 10 people with that statement right there. I came to tell you that when you're being stretched, that means you're going, growing. Can I tell you this? God stretches us so we can grow more and more and more and more into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, let me let me just let me let me hasten on through this through this missive. God is God is first of all, God is out, God is out to stretch us. Okay, you missed what I just said. God is out to stretch us, but but stretching it involves resistance and some pain. Man, that blessed about 20 people right there. Listen, listen, you, you can't be stretched unless there's resistance and some pain. <laughs> you've got some, you've got resistance and pain going on in your life because God is stretching you even as you sit in the seat right now. But can I tell you this? No one really likes to be stretched, Taylor. They don't like to be stretched. Therefore, we go through all these gyrations and mental tug of wars because we don't like to make decisions that stretch us, especially in our faith with God. But to have our faith stretch means we need to learn in, our, in the spiritual how to be. Oh, man, I'm getting ready to bless you right now. You got to learn how to be flexible. You got to learn how to be bendable in the hands of God. Oh, I just said something. Listen, cartoon character. Y'all may not remember this uh, from Westover. It's before your time and, you know, y'all won't know about this. But there was a cartoon character when I was coming up named Gumby. And Gumby understood what it meant to be bent and stretched. Sometimes Gumby was so bendable that he was known to be bent over backwards. No one, therefore, wanted to be Gumby. Can I tell you this? There's also another character from Marvel Comics known as, uh, uh, for his stretching ability, and that is Mr. Fantastic. And he's from the Fantastic Four. Don't you know he can stretch his body to incredible lengths? I just said something to somebody. Don't you know that you've got the ability and the capability by God's grace to stretch your body to incredible lengths? But let me help you. These are cartoon characters because in real life, I'm trying to help somebody. In real life, no one likes to be stretched. Nobody likes to be bent backwards. Nobody likes to be bent over. Nobody likes to be twisted. Nobody likes to be scrunched. Nobody likes to be stepped on. Nobody likes to be pushed. But if we want to grow in our faith, we must be willing to have our faith stretched. Yeah, and, and, and since God wants to grow our love for him and others, God will put some really unlovable people in your life. <laughs> Look at somebody say, he telling the truth right there. God, God will put some, God will put some unlovable and some nasty and some hateful people in your life because God intends to stretch you and take you to the next level. Oh. Well, well here, here's the point. Here's the point, family of God. Here it is. If God is stretching you, let me make this personal here. If God is stretching you, it's best to cooperate with God in the stretch. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me say that again. If God is stretching you, it's best to cooperate with God in the stretch. A new paraphrase to an old act states blessed are the flexible for they shall not be bent out of shape oh, 
<laughs> in the beginning, they are small and limited stretches. I got to preach this thing. Like when our computer goes down, the car stops working. You get a flat tire or when your relationship ends. But in these stretches, God is getting us ready for the challenges and setbacks that are on the horizon. Can I say it like this? The only reason why you're going through what you're going through now is because God is getting you ready for something bigger that's coming your way maybe it's a financial setback like the loss of a job a house or retirement fund maybe it involves your family life the loss of a loved one or a health challenge therefore it is critical my beloved that we learn how to stretch properly in the small test of faith so that we are not blown away when the major stuff comes in our lives and we see this in Israel's wilderness experience. They stopped stretching when they stopped worshiping God. Ooh, I just said something. Huh, I almost lost it. They stopped stretching when they stopped worshiping God. Don't you know that when you stop worshiping God, you will not stretch? And, and that which helps you to stretch is if you open up your mouth and you give God praise. There's about 10 people in here right now. You're ready to open up your mouth and give God praise, but you're too concerned and worried about what the person next to you is going to say. But I came in here to tell you, you don't have time to be worried about what people got to say. If God has been good to you, you ought to open up your mouth and give him some praise. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, well, Israel, Israel, Israel thought, Israel thought it was too big of a stretch to follow God. They thought it was too big of a stretch to trust God for their sustenance or to go in into and take hold of the promised land. But when they learned their lesson and started to listen to God, they became flexible. Ooh, I just said something again. When you learn how to listen to God, you become flexible. <laughs> Look at the person, tell them, I'm flexible. <laughs> Man, I feel like preaching. You don't know. Oh, my God. You don't know how the Lord blessed you with your flexibility. You would have been dead a long time ago. You would have lost your mind. But because you got flexibility to flex in the midst of the most difficult circumstances God made a way for you come on look at five people tell them I'm flexible oh, come on tell them I ain't playing I'm flexible don't mess with me I didn't come in here to play I need a blessing Whew. well well uh, they became flexible to the will of God, and when the bigger challenge presented itself to once again cross the Jordan River, they met the challenge and they possessed the promised land. But when they stopped being agile and flexible, when they stopped trusting God, they were not ready when the Assyrians and the Babylonians came and captured them. You've got to be flexible, and you've got to be ready because the enemy's going to come. The devil's coming, and you've got to be flexible. You've got to be ready. <sighs> Can I say this? Now, now that's Israel. But look at your neighbor say, talk about me, Pastor. Come on, tell them, talk about me. <laughs> I'm glad you told me to talk about you. Okay. <laughs> and we we are no different. We we talk about how how it's too much of a stretch to get up on Sunday morning and come to church. It's too much of a stretch to read our Bible in private. It's too much of a stretch to come to Bible study. It's too much of a stretch to pray every day. It's too much of a stretch to go to my class meeting. It's too much of a stress to go to Sunday school. It's too much of a stretch. But if we fail in these small stretches of faith, then we won't be able to handle the bigger challenges and great injury will be done to our relationship, our families, not to mention our faith and our devotion to God. We need to believe in God even when it doesn't make any sense. 
I just helped somebody in here. You got up this morning and you came to church and you had to deal with a challenge and you said it doesn't make any sense that I got up and had to deal with this and God knows that I'm on my way to church. I got to deal with this trauma. But can I tell you something? The only reason why you're dealing with it is because God is getting ready to stretch you. And God wanted you to hear it and to go through it because he understood you were getting ready to come to Simon Temple and that the pastor was getting ready to preach a sermon on stretch so that when you got in the door, that whatever hell you were going through, that God gave you the ability and the capability to stretch a little while longer. Look at somebody say, you got to stretch, baby. Oh, here, it, here it is. Here it is, Ryan. Ryan, here it is, Ryan. Our lives and faith are won or lost, not in the trenches, but in the stretch. Whew. <laughs> it's it's the final it's it, it's in the final it's in the final stretch that our destiny is determined and like Israel if we haven't stretched properly then we will pull up lame and possibly never make it across the finish line but I declare as I get ready to go to my second point I declare there's somebody in here you gonna make it to the finish line I don't care what they said they said you'll never graduate from high school. They said that you would never get out of middle school. They said that you would never get a decent job. They said you were going to be locked up in prison. They said that nobody would ever like you. They said that your life is not worth anything. But I came by here to tell you that the devil's a lie. God is getting ready to stretch you. Uh, uh, well, uh, well, secondly, I got to go, y'all. I'm so hungry, y'all. I got to go. Uh, I'm so hungry. That last holler right there, my stomach growled with me. Okay, here we go. Secondly, secondly, my brothers and sisters, can I tell you there's victory in the stretch? <laughs> uh, look at somebody say, I know that's right. It's victory in the stretch. Now, this was something Paul was well acquainted with, yet he still found, he found the stretch uh, difficult. He said it was like a gigantic tug of war going on on the inside. For he said, for what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. For the good that I will do, I do not. But the evil I will not do, that I practice. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? He says, I thank God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I like the New Living Translation interpretation. Uh, it says of these two verses, Oh, what a miserable person I am who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Can I help you in here? Ain't nothing like Jesus. <laughs> Look at somebody say, Jesus will fix it for you. I'm telling you he will. This tug of war is the stretch and it's transforming us into the likeness of Jesus Christ, a new season. But if we refuse to stop stretching because it's too hard, then we will stop growing. Stretching, it produces growth. <laughs> oh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Somebody going to get mad if I say it, but can I say it anyway? Can I say it anyway? I'm going I'm to say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a say it. I'm going to say it, Sister Yade, and I'm going to say it. Uh, maturity doesn't come with age. <laughs> Gro listen, listen, growing, growing, old is, <laughs> growing old is not the same as growing up. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. <laughs> missed it. <laughs> I've known, I've known, I've known, I've known 40-year-old kids. 
and 14-year-old adults. Y'all miss what I just said. <laughs> I see somebody said, I know that right. Listen, uh, our maturity happens in the stretch, y'all. Evan Roberts prayed through Wales in revival. He said, bend me, O Lord. Oh, ooh, ooh, I just said something. Oh, my God. But when God bends us, God will not break us. <laughs> He's not going to break us. When God stretches us, he will not snap us. This is what the prophet Isaiah found out as God was stretching him. Well, well, God is, God is out to stretch us. There's victory in the stretch. But thirdly, you listen, you must know who's doing the stretching. <laughs> oh, it's about to get juicy, y'all. Uh, 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 west over, a rubber band cannot stretch all by itself. Uh, 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 Westover cheerleaders peep this out. Uh, a rubber band needs someone to stretch it so it can fulfill its purpose. <laughs> the Bible says it is God who works in both to will and to do for his good pleasure. As believers, we want the Lord stretching us, uh, but we also need to know that not every opportunity is from God. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to talk to some young people right now. Every opportunity to come your way ain't from God. <laughs> uh-uh. Man, there's some stuff going to come your way, going to smell good, going to look good, but can I tell you, it ain't good for you. There are going to be some people this school year that's going to try to get you to step outside of what you know is right. And I came by here to tell you that you can't let nobody cause you to step out of what you know to be right. And you can't go there just because everybody else is going there. Look at somebody, tell them sometimes you got to stand by yourself. Young people, can I tell you this? Sometimes you got to stand by yourself because it's the one who can stand tall by him or herself understands that you got God on your side and can't nobody touch you. Oh, I feel like preaching now. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like it. Uh, uh, we also we also know the devil the devil is a fraud uh, look at somebody say he a fraud the devil's a fraud he's a fake and the bible says he's the father of all lies and the devil knows exactly what excites us so he he baits his hook appropriately <laughs> can i tell you this young people Devil knows if you like Daisy Dukes. Okay, y'all got real quiet on me. Devil knows if you like a little weed. Man, I wish I had about 10 minutes to preach this thing. <laughs> he knows it and so and, and so and we know what we ought not do but the devil likes to put it in our face put it in our face he put our face we need we need to know and identify with God in the beginning and let God stretch us so that we don't fall for the schemes of the devil and follow the devil's path the devil's stretch however isn't really all that difficult but when God stretches us, God will do so where difficult and possibility or possible rather life-threatening choices have to be made. Sometimes God will stretch you because you got to make some decisions in your life. I came by here to tell somebody it's time for you to get up and walk away. You miss what I just said. It's time for you. You can't listen. Some of them people that you had last year with your friends in school, you can't roll with them this year because God is taking you to another level. He's raising you up and you can't hang around people that ain't trying to go nowhere. 
Oh, oh my God. Oh. Dr. King said, Dr. King said it like this. I submit to you that if a man or woman has not discovered something that he or she will die for, he or she isn't fit to live at all. Oh, man, I'm getting to the text now. Whew, here it goes. Consider four young Jewish men. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach. And Abednego. They had been taken from, from their homes in Judah and made to serve in King Nebuchadnezzar's court. Early on, they were stretched by God when presented with the dilemma of eating food given to them from the king's table. It would be an insult to refuse and could even lead to their deaths. But they knew God and identified with God early on in this test. In this stretch, knowing that to eat the king's food would violate God's law. They, they, they accepted the stretch and they were victorious. I don't care what the king serves. I ain't eating it. Man, I wish I had 10 people in here right now that when the king comes by to serve you something that's not of God, you need to say, I ain't going to eat that stuff. You've got to be able to stand on your own two feet and you don't have to follow the crowd where the crowd's going. You stand with God. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And young people got some gifts and some skills. And don't you let nobody tell you you're not gifted and you don't have skills and you don't have the ability to succeed in life. Matter of fact, let me pause here for a second and say I'm going to speak life over every young person in this building right now. You're going to have a successful year. There's going to be prosperity in your life. The devil's not going to have the power. You've got the victory in Christ Jesus. And can I say this to you young people in here today? You've got some older folk in here who are ready to praise God with you for the victory in your life. As a matter of fact, young people, we're going to give God praise for you. And we're going to thank God for you and for everything you've accomplished in your life. And for everything that God is getting ready to do in your life. Oh, oh we're going to celebrate them. Come on, let's celebrate our young people. You're going to be victorious, I'm telling you. You're going to be victorious. You got it. Victory is yours. Look at somebody tell them in Jesus' name. Oh, my God. That's why you in here. Because there's something that God is getting ready to tell you. You're going to take in the new year, and your life is getting ready to explode. When you go home today and you cross the threshold of the door of your house, people going to start looking at you, asking you what you got, where you been. You look different. You going to tell them, I've had a meeting with Jesus and he told me that I can do anything I strive hard enough for. Look at somebody say, stretch, stretch me. Yeah. Oh, my God, I got excited. I'm so sorry, uh, uh, <laughs> Reverend Bennett. I just lost it for a second. Let me get back to these. These these are young men. These are these these four young men gave uh, they they <laughs> these four young men. God gave them knowledge and skill, literature and wisdom. Daniel had understanding, vision and dreams. Soon a bigger stretch was coming. Man, I'm not gonna fool nobody in this house. You do know that a bigger stretch is getting ready to come. 
Okay, I, I know we just got excited a few minutes ago and we were praising God, but can I tell you something? Things are getting ready to get tough. But I came by here to tell you, don't you worry about that. You just give God praise anyhow. I've learned a long time ago that I got to give God praise before the victory. There's somebody in here right now, I'm telling you, if you just open up your mouth and give God a little praise, if you just wave a little hand, I'm trying to tell you that God is going to give you the victory. You might as well walk in it now. Bigger stretch is coming. You did. King Nebuchadnezzar, he had, he had built, he had, oh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sorry, had built a huge golden statue of himself. Y'all ain't there yet. I'm going to say it one more time. I said King Nebuchadnezzar. He built a huge golden statue of himself. 90 feet tall and about 9 feet wide. And Nebuchadnezzar got together with his court and told everyone that they had to bow down to the golden image. Okay, y'all missed it. Nebuchadnezzar got with his officials. Nebuchadnezzar got with his Congress. Nebuchadnezzar got with his, his judges and said that if you go around wearing my stuff bow down to me then you gonna live <laughs> oh my god everyone bow down except for Shadrach Meshach and a bad negro They didn't, they didn't bow down to Project 2025. Because they knew God and had been stretched in the past. They were going to be victorious. When the king said, bow or burn, they said, we don't even need to think about our answer because our God is able to deliver us from your hands. But can I tell you something? They didn't stop there, but went on to say, but if not, look at somebody, tell them if not, if not, let it be known to you, O oh king, that we do not serve your gods. We don't serve the version of the Bible you sell it. We don't serve men with no integrity. We don't serve men who hang out with porn stars. No, no, no. Uh-uh. If not, let it be known, okay. That we do not serve you or your gods. Nor will we worship the golden image set up. God 
was so delighted that God not only protected them from the heat and the flames of the furnace because let me tell you something when they refused to bow down to, I wish I had 10 people who were witnesses today who can testify I wish I had five people who could testify that, that when the king was upset when Trump was uh, when Trump was upset and said that he would throw them in oh, can I tell you something this is how the furnace was made it was made into a mountain and it had the top cut off and oh my god I feel my help coming it says that they took them up to the top tied them up and threw them into the fiery furnace my bible tells me that they threw them down into the furnace but can I tell you something this is how God works uh -huh. he threw them in and they had to overcome two challenges number one they had to overcome the falls into the furnace but then they had to overcome the flame of the furnace can I tell you something? When you're on God's side, can't nobody take your life. Not even Jesus gave his life, or they took his life. For the Bible says that he gave his life. Well, the Bible says that when they threw him in, to the furnace it says that Nebuchadnezzar came out of his towers in New York came out looked down into the furnace and said one two three four four one one two three four wait a minute Wait a minute. He said, he called together his council and he said, didn't we, didn't we throw in three? One, two, three. But I see a fourth one. And the Bible says that the fourth one looks like the son of the living God. Let me tell you something. When the enemy comes up against you, you need to know that you've got a God that will protect you. You have a God who will fix it for you. You have a God. Look at somebody, tell them I got a God. And I ain't gonna let no president, I'm not gonna let no court, I'm not gonna let no politician steal me and rob me of my joy because this joy that I have, man didn't give it to me and man, oh Lord, can't take it away. I need some people in here who understand that sometimes God has to stretch you. Sometimes you've got to go through the fire. Sometimes you've got to go through hard times. Sometimes you've got to go through trials. But if you trust the God you serve, he will 
Yeah. Look at somebody say, stretch me. Stretch me, Lord. Give me room. Stretch me, Lord. Give me power. Stretch me, Lord. Give me strength. Stretch me, Lord. Look at somebody say, stretch. 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 Yeah. Somebody say stretch, baby, stretch. 